Bass are the most difficult to catch when they're suspended in the middle of the water column. Common knowledge says to throw baits, like swim baits or jerk baits, they are fished in the middle of the water column to get these fish to bite. However, I recently figured out a new technique that is actually better at catching suspended bass than your traditional swim baits and jerk baits. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use this new approach to catch bass that are suspended in standing timber. Let's get into it. Standing timber is basically old trees that are in the middle of the lake and they were here before the lake was flooded. They're a great place to find fish, but they're pretty tricky to figure out because if you have a field of standing timber, it's hard to determine which trees are good. Well, what I started out by doing is graphing an entire creek of standing timber and using my down imaging and 2D sonar to identify trees that had bait fish and fish around them. If you take a look at some of these images, you'll see that some of the trees have no life around them. It's just the tree, no bait fish, no fish. However, in this one maybe 100 yard section, maybe 50 yard section, there was a lot of fish and a lot of bait. Specifically, there was about a 20 yard patch of trees that had the most activity around them. After finding that good group of trees, I tried to catch some of the suspended bass I saw on down imaging that were in six to eight feet of water, over 20 feet of water, by throwing a jerk bait. It didn't seem to really get those fish excited though, they would follow the bait a little bit and lose interest. You can actually see that on the live scope here pretty clearly. I then tried to throw a finesse swim bait and a drop shot around those trees, but didn't get any of the fish to commit. Finally, I tied on one of my go-to baits when the fish are really pressured and really finicky, especially when they're suspended, and that's a Neko rig. This is basically a wacky rig worm where you have an O-ring in the center of the worm and you put a nail weight in the head of the worm. I paired this on a owner weedless finesse hook and I just put a little uh, 332 ounce nail weight that I cut in half. So it's uh, whatever that is divided by two, uh, just a light nail weight, something that made the bait fall about a foot per second through the water column. This Neko rig, for whatever reason, is just a deadly technique offshore when those bass won't touch any other moving baits, a crankbait, flutter spoons, hair jigs, jerk baits, anything like that. And I pitched it out to one of these trees, and what I noticed immediately is that a fish started following this bait all the way down to the bottom. It wouldn't pick up the bait as it was falling, but for whatever reason it went all the way down to the bottom, and you can see that here on live scope, and then as that bait was dead sticked on the bottom, it ate it set the hook, and I caught that fish. I thought that was kind of weird, so I went to the next tree, saw a fish on the live scope, pitched that little Neko rig next to the tree, and the exact same thing happened. I saw a fish get interested in, the, in my bait. The bait fell all the way down to the bottom, hit the bottom. I let it sit there for two or three seconds, and then that fish ate it. For whatever reason today on those trees, the fish did not want to eat a bait that was suspended in the middle of the water column. They wanted to eat a bait that was on the bottom. They wanted to trap it against the bottom, but they were suspended to start with. It was really weird. They were basically positioned six to eight feet off the bottom, over 20 feet of water, but when they were actually wanting to commit to the bait or feed, they wanted to commit and feed on the actual bottom of the lake. And I was able to replicate this over a dozen times. I caught two really solid fish that were in the four to five pound class, and I actually missed a bunch of fish as well. One thing that I noticed about this weedless wacky rig hook is that for whatever reason, I would sometimes get the little weed guards caught in the worm and the fish wouldn't get the bait fully in their mouth and I lose them, or the actual hook would bury into the worm when I set the hook and I'd also lose them. I need to figure out a better sit, uh, setup for this Neko rig around trees because normally I just fish it with an open hook and I don't have any problems losing fish, but something about this weedless hook just doesn't quite work with this worm I'm throwing. I'm going to experiment with more hooks, but definitely the weedless hook was necessary around these trees because when I tried to throw it without a weed guard, I would get hung up like every single cast. So I'm going to try some more hooks out here and I'll make a dedicated video talking about my complete Neko rig setup here in the next couple of weeks. But as far as the worm I'm using, this is just a six and a half inch Yamamoto cut tail worm. It's in green pumpkin color. I was also catching them on a black worm as well. Didn't really seem to matter. This is just uh, a kind of a straight tail-ish worm, but it has a fatter end on one side and then a, a skinnier tail on the other. The way that I hook this bait is I have the weight in that fatter end and I make sure that the hook 
is the point of the hook is pointed towards the head of the bait and the bottom shank is pointed towards the tail of the worm. That just seems to get better hookup ratios for me when I'm fishing this bait. As far as my equipment, I actually started throwing it on six pound test because I was lazy and didn't want to retie an eight pound uh, fluorocarbon leader, but I actually ended up breaking off a really big one because it got me in a tree. So I eventually switched over to an eight pound uh, Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader. The eight pound test did a little bit better around those trees than the six pound test. And I also put some 20 pound braided line, this is some Sunline braid on the spinning reel. So I have a little bit stronger test when it was getting sawed off in those trees. As far as my reel, I'm using a $50 Abu Garcia Max Pro reel I bought at Walmart. And then I'm actually pairing that with a Denali Lithium Pro seven foot four medium heavy action spinning rod. And if you hadn't heard the announcement yet, Denali is actually sponsoring the Fish the Moment YouTube channel. We actually have a discount code for all the Fish the Moment users. I'm gonna leave it on the screen here, but it's FTM2022. It's all caps and it's case sensitive, so make sure you put all caps FTM2022. And if you go to DenaliRods.com, you can actually get a 30% discount on any purchase you make. It's a one-time use code, but you can try out any of their rods. And this is an absolutely amazing rod. I haven't really gone with any rods above the $200 price point in maybe 10 years, but this is the first one I've tried in this Lithium Pro series in a spinning rod. And I always hear from guys that having a sensitive spinning rod is really important. And I didn't realize how important it was until today, because these fish were barely, I mean, barely eating that worm. It was sitting on the bottom and I was able to feel them pick up that bait all the way through this rod in 20 foot of water, super sensitive. And it's also a very long rod, seven foot four, medium heavy. And so it has a good amount of backbone to it, but still a little bit of tip. And that allows me to set the hook when those fish are really deep. I'm not saying this is the only rod you ever wanna buy, but this is a really nice one. So I really like it, but they also have a lot of other great rods that I throw as well. They're more in the like $129 range, like this attack series that I really like. And there's also the um, covert light series you've seen me throw a couple times as well. So there's a lot of different price points. You can go to the website, denalirods.com, use that promo code and get 30% off, try any of the rods. But back to my fishing day, it was really cool to see those fish react on live scope and learn a new bass behavior that I really don't think I fully understood before. The fact that those suspended bass will actually follow baits all the way down to the bottom and then eat them off the bottom of the lake as opposed to biting them while they're suspended or work through the middle of the water column. I feel like this is something that I may have been doing wrong for a long time. Whenever I see suspended fish, my first instinct is to pick up a bait like a swim bait or a jerk bait. And I don't initially go to a bait like a Neko rig or a drop shot, something like that, to work through those fish and then have them follow it all the way down. This is maybe something you haven't tried either. And so if you are seeing suspended fish on your fish finder and you're trying to get them to bite, pull out this Neko rig, pitch it, by their area, let it fall away to the bottom, dead stick it down there, you might be able to get some really good bites. And when I first got out here, I was the only guy fishing the standing timber out here in the middle of these pockets. No one else was doing it, but after a few guys saw me catch 15 or 20 bass doing it, they got curious and started doing it themselves, but I actually didn't see another angler catch a single fish out of the standing timber. Some guys had Garmin Live Scope on their boat and were trying to throw jerk baits around and weren't getting any bites just like I did when I started doing this. And then other guys were actually just pitching jigs or like shaky heads around the trees and they weren't getting bit either. And I think the key is that the technique is pretty specific in the sense that I needed to pitch that bait directly at a fish that I saw in the live scope and watch that bait fall past the fish. And then once I knew that that bait was falling past the fish nice and slow and he was following it, I had to dead stick that bait directly on the bottom. I think a combination of that slow fall with that Neko rig versus like a faster fall of a jig, plus knowing when to dead stick that bait on the bottom was the key to getting bit. Without the live scope, I honestly don't even know if I was gonna be able to catch these fish because it's such a specific technique. I'm sure you could just cast around in these trees, let that bait sink all the way to the bottom, dead stick it for five seconds, then reel it in. That might be a way to do it if you don't have live scope. And it could be a technique that definitely works, but especially having the live scope today was an advantage. Uh, I might try it someday without the live scope to see if it's possible. And one other thing is that a lot of times these bass behaviors only happen once in a blue moon. I know I've seen some crazy stuff 
that fish do on live scope that will happen one day, but I've never seen the bass repeat that behavior the next day. So you need to make sure that you're constantly paying attention to what the bass are doing, both in your electronics, just the way they're biting your bait, how, how they're biting your bait, like are they biting it when you're reeling the bait fast or slow, all those things can give you a clue as to how the fish are acting that specific day. And you wanna vary up what you're doing. Don't just stick with the same two or three baits all the time and use the same retrieve, same way you always do it. Go to some unique baits, try some different techniques in areas where you know the fish are present and you'll oftentimes get onto something that other guys on the lake aren't doing and you'll put a lot of good fish in the boat like I did today. So I'm gonna try to go catch one more fish out here for fun and uh, we got the camera in the boat now so let's see if we can put one more big one in the boat before we call it a day. He choked that thing. Beautiful fish right there. Look at that one. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Whew. Four and a half, five pounder there on the Neko rig right there, down his throat. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Woo! Let's get his beautiful fish back down to those trees. She's off. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Pulled out the fairy wand today and definitely worked out. And it was really cool experimenting with a new technique, a new way of targeting fish on cover that I'm pretty familiar with. Obviously, I came here thinking I was gonna throw a jerk bait or some other type of lure, but it worked out that I was able to kind of call an audible try a new technique and put them in the boat. That's what fishing's all about, absolutely love it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something about how to maybe adapt on the fly when fishing conditions are maybe not what you expected. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the Fishing Moment YouTube channel so you don't miss any more future uploads. We're gonna be uploading three videos a week from now on, that's the goal, so definitely stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot more content coming from Fish the Moment. We'll see you all in the next one.